Well, hey neighbors and hey neighbor John. I know John will definitely see this video. John's 028 is on the bench right now and he just texted me. I sent him a picture of his saw on my bench and I said, you're up. And I started recording and he texted me and he said, make a video of it for YouTube. And that's what I love. Um, and John is a fellow tinkerer, so it, it makes me even more happy. And this is rejuvenating me. I came to the shed shop very tired. I just went in and had dinner after tearing down a 1980 vintage uh, wood boss that I'm so sad to see my shop uh, lose that saw. But I'm very happy that it's going to Eric, who bought both of the 028s, that I love to keep together with the story. Y'all can watch a video on a little bit of the detail, details of that story. It is titled, John Doe, yeah, I dropped a tree on her 20 years ago and I ain't touched her since, or something like that. It's very close to that. I should have looked it up. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just grinding. I'm grinding out, and I'm just letting you guys uh, uh, join me. Y'all are my neighbors, uh, and especially the neighbors where I'm working on their stuff. I want them to see it. I want them to see it. Let's 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 give clarity. Let's let them enjoy the journey of, especially these vintage ones. You guys, these are really great. These saws are are right now. Most of these wood bosses are older than me. Or as old as me. That 1986 is exactly a year older than me. Or, or yeah. No, I'm sorry. A year younger than me. I was I was roughly one year old the, the day they authorized that out of the um, steel factory on the east coast of the United States. Um, I'm trying to remember. I'm having a brain fart. It's, it's in Virginia, I believe. Goodness, West Virginia. No, maybe North Carolina. I'm sorry, guys. I can't remember. I, I, that's one. I can tell I'm tired. That's one I should really be able to recollect easily. Um. Anyways, so on this video, we're gonna we're gonna just do a whole video. I I I've heard the 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 feedback that that the neighbors are giving me. My local, very local neighbors have some have given me feedback over the phone on the YouTube, and and I am listening, neighbors. Um, especially about the time, the time and breaking saws down, because when I thought about that, I thought, yeah, it needs to be, you know, before I ever thought about actually, I've been recording for months, you guys, I've been recording footage for months. I just never really knew how to, I'm not a tech guy, as I continue to say. And so that being said, I'm going to glove up and I'm going to tell you a little bit about, uh, this saw and why we're the ones working on it. Um, and then we're going to get to work. We're just going to turn you over to the saw and we're gonna let you watch the tear down and then hopefully it'll be on YouTube very soon and maybe I'll even do this before the other two uh, since it takes me an entire day to, to upload videos sometime um, out here in the woods um, I know John's super excited but I also know Eric's Eric's wanting to see his I think as well but John John definitely has been an encouragement and um, being a fellow Reg Turner, John come over the other day. Well, John, I don't even know. I'm losing track of my days. But <clears throat> I told John, if he wasn't in a hurry, and I try to do this with neighbors when they're here, let's go ahead and diagnose what you got. He brought another saw with him, and we diagnosed it, and it had an air leak. It needs a complete rebuild. I can't remember... If his piston was okay or not, uh, we, we did look through the muffler. I don't think we put the camera in there. Um, but but John sat here while I turned wrench, and we just chatted, and I love that. And Trent is a neighbor. I've done that with a couple of times already, and we just mess with each other, and he's just a really great guy. And so if you ever see me commenting, uh, well, what can I say about Trent? He's just Trent, whatever. It's, it's, he, he's one of my favorite neighbors. I really enjoy turning wrench with him. Uh, and he'll turn wrench with me. He'll come sit down and tinker with his stuff with me. Um, and so that's great. I love it. I, I mean, I love that. That's fantastic. And that's what I want it to be about, guys. Let's build community. All right, we're gloved up. I'm going to turn it over to John Saw. So, John, I went up to see, I went up to Outdoor Power, John, and uh, Miss Amy up there told me, I mentioned you, told her what I've been working on recently, and I mentioned you, and she said, you're working on John, John L. stuff? And I said, yes, man. She said, that's weird. He usually don't let nobody touch his stuff. He usually works on his own stuff. And, and just right there, the, the honor, uh, John, for working on your saw went up immensely, brother. 
I, I'm really honored that you, you after seeing the YouTube channel, um, and seeing my pictures of my saws online, uh, were willing to give me a chance on your stuff. And so I'm very grateful. John showed me some pictures of a home light he's working on right now that has been his since he was a, a teenager, which I think is beautiful. Um, and John doesn't have time to work on his stuff, and I totally get that. My van needs so much right now. Uh, uh, I, I need to get to my van and work on it, but I just don't have time. And so if I had the money, I most certainly would be paying somebody else to work on my van. Oh, and I'm sorry. John's John's got the super. And we will we will have steel. Trace John's serial number. We'll get as much information as we can on his saw for him. Anytime I do a vintage saw, that's a steal. If we can get his serial number, that is. Um Yep, beautiful. I think I, I think I will be able to clean that up enough to get it. I do think I do think. And I'm sorry if I, if I, I don't want to edit this video unless I have to cut a big chunk of me jabbering out. That's what I love about the editing. That's mainly what I cut out, me talking too much. Um, I've only done it with a couple videos so far, but y'all don't want to listen to me too much. But I'm not so much explaining the teardown on this one because, at least in the beginning... Because I want to make this, this video especially personal for John. And that's what I'm doing. When I'm working on your saw neighbor, I'm making a video for the whole world to see if they want. But I, I'm largely making it for you. 2180-49339. Uh, from what little bit I know about, sometimes you can decode certain things about uh, the, the year of a saw in the serial number. Not always, sometimes. Um, it's got the orange on the name badge. I haven't seen that in a while. Well, we'll look it up. We'll have Steel look it up. I'm not going to say anything about what year I think it is quite yet. Maybe John knows. I don't know. I didn't ask him. Um, so where were we in that conversation? Goodness sakes. Sorry, you guys. I have to tear John's saw down tonight because, like I said, I have to get the parts order in uh, tomorrow before the steel dealer closes because um, in order to be able to make it easy on my steel guy who helps me out a lot at the parts counter down there in Columbia, Mark. In order to make it easy on him, I have to get the list together in a, in a specific way. And I, I try to do it. He typically orders, I believe if I remember right, on Mondays from steel. And um, I've got Nathan's 041 to get sit down and get the parts list for um we have got both of eric's 028s that we just tore down to sit down and get all the part numbers we need for that and then we have got uh john's saw now john if i remember right um bought this saw the saw was running and John was just, I believe, just trying to kind of let it idle for a little while and see what she did. And, and and it makes sense to me. You know, you've got to figure out what's going on with the saw before you go to tinkering with it. You want to kind of have an idea of how it's running and and various things. And, and I, I cannot, I'm very tired. I cannot re recollect the entire story he told me. Uh, and John, you can comment and tell us. You tell us any details you want, brother. I'd love for you to comment on your video when it's up there. Uh Let's see here. That all of a sudden he noticed it was smoking. And what he what what he discovered was everything melted over here. I do believe we're going to be able to recover his sprocket. I was looking at it more today. Let me get the box of parts John brought with us. Um, okay, I've got his last name on it. So I'm sure he's not going to mind. And I know he's going to comment. He's here on the channel. So yeah, you know what? I, I know he won't mind. His name is John Luna. He's here on the channel. When you guys see him comment on his video... Uh, please support him. Please please just give him a, a, a thumbs up on his comment and just say hey to him. Just say hey neighbor. Now this has got a ton of plastic on it. However, when we look at the teeth of our sprocket, everything looks good. We're going to replace the rim. I don't even want to try and save it. Uh, they're, they're, they're not expensive. Um, they're not entirely expensive. But this one does have a little bit of wear. 
you know what? You know what, John? I'm looking at this. I'll bet you, buddy, if I can find something to melt or to, to eat this plastic off of the metal, and I think I have something, we'll try a few different things. That actually does not have very much wear on it. We'll see. We'll see. Like I said, you guys, you'll see me in videos. I'll be looking at stuff. I'll. Ch I, it's it's usually not until last minute I've completely made up my mind on stuff. But I do believe his sprocket, we won't have to replace it. I mean, we'll get that off, I think. That's just plastic. It's all just melted plastic. So, save John some money by tinkering. Right? You know? I don't charge hourly rates. And if I can save a neighbor $35 dollars on a piece of metal by spending a couple hours while I'm working on other projects here in the shed shop um tinkering on and off on that and trying different things to remove that plastic why wouldn't I he's my neighbor he's a fellow tinkerer and demands working uh umpteen hours a week to where he doesn't even have time to work on his own stuff and and it, it's it's not easy allowing somebody else to work on your own stuff okay John's screws are really dirty here and it's too hard to get out with the air compressor. I can already tell. Um, Like right now, guys. <laughs> I slept with my laundry last night. My uncle put it on my bed and I had no idea. Um, All day because I was out here working all day long. I didn't even go inside to eat. I go inside to get water. That's it. And that don't consist of going in my bedroom. Um, So I slept with my laundry. And after this saw... I might use the excuse of doing another saw so that I can justify my own mind falling asleep with my laundry on the bed again. Okay. And these are all T25s or T... Golly, I gotta stop saying that. T27s. And the air compressor is small, you guys, so it's gonna kick on soon enough. So I apologize about that. I'll try to edit it out. I'll try to stop what I'm doing and then edit the sound out if I have time. And your your kill wire, you guys, your ground wire for your kill switch on this saw. Oh, wow. I did not really zoomed in this whole time. Darn it. Now I flip. You see what you did, John? I messed up this whole video for you, buddy. I'm so sorry. Golly, I've already got I've already got a lot of stuff taken off. We're just gonna roll with it, brother. John will forgive me. Um, as I was saying, you guys, on the on the O28 supers here and the O28s, this kill wire, um, it just goes there, and then your screw goes on top. I I, I have put it underneath before. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure why I would do that. I guess I felt like it might have made a better connection, but it works fine like that. That's how they did it, and the saws run just fine. The bolt is enough to ground it out. Okay, and then over here, we have a flathead uh, screw, and sometimes I can't get these with a flathead because of the handle, and so I just take the eight mil. It also is an eight mil square bolt. Um, and there is a grommet that this bolt goes through, a rubber grommet, and sometimes those are rotted and dried out and sometimes they're not I think John's doesn't need replaced John's home light is blue like mine I've got an old home light under here that I bought from the neighbor next door who I'm trying to buy shed shop 2.0 from but his wife bless her heart said we growed up where if we wanted something we had to pay for it in cash and I did not respond with what I felt like saying, which is, yeah, but when I growed up, I paid 96 cents for a gallon of gas. And in my lifetime, I have paid over $5 a gallon for gas. Okay. Oh, that spark plug was loose. Goodness. I just busted busted knuckle for you, John. My first busted knuckle all day. It's a brand new spark plug. Is it not? John, is your spark plug brand new? Okay, I'm going to put it in a bag. I don't typically use them, but reuse them. But um, if you want it back, I'm going to save it for you. That looks brand new. If I can find a bag. Here we go. I'm almost out of bags. Wow. 
And what I had forgotten to do, you guys, I got to get a container to put his saw in. I ran out. Whew, there we go. Okay. Uh, so, we're doing basically a, a decent cleaning for him. And I am going to go ahead and remove uh, this part of the recoil because I, I don't like recoils that are plugged up. It's important that you have airflow. Okay, these fins on this recoil are here for a reason. They're, they're to cause airflow um, to keep your engine cool. It's just like the fan that blows on the radiator on a car. It serves a purpose. It's meant to be there. It's designed to help prevent your chainsaw from overheating. And so it's a good idea to keep this blown out. Now this thing isn't, it's not clogged up or anything, but I just like to go ahead and get the whole thing nice and clean. Um, and so we'll either throw this in the um, <clears throat> ports washer or the ultrasonic ports washer. I have not decided yet. Always depends, you guys. Sometimes I just tell people the extent that I'm willing to go to and essentially that kind of applies if I don't have time. I always try to go above and beyond for my customers, my neighbors. Um, but I can't always go above and beyond because I get very busy. Like right now I'm very busy. It's it's 9 o'clock at night. And I'm tearing down my fifth chainsaw for today. Plus I have um, removed the decom valve from the Nightmare MS290 conversion to 390 Chinese top end for Pete for neighbor Pete and that thing was getting blowback and so I finally found out what was causing the blowback and it essentially was leaking you go you see the video when I upload it it's not there yet but it's essentially leaking back here behind the carburetor it's sucking in air and that causes instead of sucking in air from back here and pulling the fuel that you see guys here I, I really wanted I'm gonna do this video but while we're here John's a fellow tinkerer and so I'd like to share this knowledge just in case um, he, he can never use it. Because um, when I didn't notice stuff, I wish somebody would have told me. I've just kind of learned by figuring it out, most of it. All right, because I've had blowback on a lot of chainsaws recently. So I feel like I should be talking about it for some reason. Right here, I'm going to get the guy's name as well. I keep saying it. He's like CTS. No, it's not. Ay, ay, ay. It's something repair something. He's the best carburetor guy on the darn internet. I'm telling you. I promise I'm going to get who he is. And put it in the video links. Or the video descriptions. Okay so your fuel blows in from here. When you pull your throttle. Fuel blows in your carburetor. Into your venturi right here. Okay. And then the vacuum in your, in your two stroke. The vacuum that's caused by the piston. Pulling up. Okay. Causes a vacuum. And that causes the fuel or I'm sorry, the air to be pulled through your venturi as well. And so then you thus then have an air fuel mixture, okay? And and the problem is if you've got your air pulling in back here or up here, I should say, closer to your cylinder between your carburetor and your intake boot right here, instead of back here, your fuel blows out this way. Now you'll get some in the motor, but you're going to be running a lean condition and you're going to sop up your filter and eventually your saw is going to die. Okay. Um, and the other problem that can be caused is if, say you have a worn out air filter like these old O28s. Um, I thought I just had one on the bench. Let's see if we put it in one of the boxes, the O28s down here. John, I hope you don't mind. We're using your teardown video. I know you won't to explain a little bit of this, but I am going to do a, a video, you guys, I promise, that is literally explaining the causes of blowback that I've discovered and then and then the, the resolutions and how to diagnose them. You know, I have a lot of tools, you guys, that, that are for two-stroke motors and I have a lot of steel specialty tools as well. I, I probably don't even have a tenth of what they put out there, but I do have several um, that I can work across many models. Um, I don't see the air filter, but, but they lose. Darn it, I want to show you guys. I really do. I got like four 028s over here and I can't find the air filter I just had. I left it on the... Oh, there it is. Okay. Look, this filter's not going to catch any kind of fines, but the other thing is you're not going to be able to sop this up with fuel. 
uh, eventually it's gonna gonna have to puddle up. But the problem with that is, no matter how much you adjust this, you're gonna be running a lean condition. You're are uh, you're you're not getting all the fuel. Okay, it's not coming through, and therefore you're gonna be running a lean condition. And if you have a filter like this, you don't know because your filter can't plug up with with sopping wetness before your your saw shuts off, and you could blow your saw up. So. The blowback thing is very important. Okay, these little screws, I need to put them in a bag and label them. Like I said, we will do a video on that. As soon as I get caught up, you guys, the videos are going to get way better, you promise, because I'm going to be able to spend a little bit more time on a YouTube thing. But I got to make some money. <laughs> I have to. Um, lots of bills. Okay, very good. There we go. Okay, this is this is this saw. Let me make sure. Nope. I'm glad I made sure. Don't want to mix stuff up. <clears throat> These vintage saws, even though most of the parts are interchangeable. I like to keep them together so I won't take them like a, a, a newer saw where I'll break down five, six, ten at a time. I like to keep the parts as original as possible to this saw. So I might not know if somebody changed them. Top cover we was working off. And it's got three screws, you guys. You're going to have a T27, T27. Sometimes they're a flathead. And as I discovered today, apparently sometimes on an O28, they can be a... 5.30 seconds hex head. John, your top cover doesn't want to come off. There we go. What is that? There we go. She's just stuck a little. Okay, so that's the that's the grommet I was talking about. His is a little dry, but I think we can reuse it. I don't know. We'll have to see. I think if we uh, just treat it with some uh, penetrating oil... And so I'll spray it now and we'll look at it later when we go to clean the parts. Next, John. Kind of looking. I think your clutch is going to be like a nightmare like the other two. I haven't gotten the clutch off yet, so they're going to soak in catalyst all night. Uh, we'll take John's coil off next. Okay, this is two T27s. And I always go very, when I'm using the impact, very carefully. If they don't break loose right away, I will try and hand turn them with a ratchet. Because this is a, a magnesium crankcase and you can re-tap these, but I don't like stripping this, this stuff out. I mean, ruin the crankcase, that's it. Crankcases ain't cheap for these vintage saws. Okay. Yeah, and we are 100% going through John's saw. He wanted it completely gone through. So that's what we're going to do for him. Uh, the throttle on the O28, the throttle lever, is is very easy. I've already taken it off. I'll put it back on just for sake of showing you guys. It just sits over the carburetor. I got to get tires. These lights, you guys, I don't know what it is. I thought I bought good lights, uh, but I noticed it doesn't seem, no matter what kind of artificial light it is, I just cannot see well in it. I can see perfectly outside in the sunshine. But I cannot see under light. So all you have to do to get your throttle lever off, okay, is pull your trigger in. I'm pulling the trigger in. Hold this. Let go. And push aside, and it's out of the way. I, I, these are bent all the time. I don't know what people do to get them off, but they're com they're just completely bent all the time. All right, and now, again, as I've showed you guys, I usually leave this grommet in unless I'm going to be using some kind of solvent that is not safe on rubber or whatever. Um, and I don't know what I'll do on John's saw yet. How, how far we'll go on cleaning it. Um, we did discuss that while John was here tinkering with me, which was great. And then your, your, uh, this, <clears throat> your on off and your choke lever on this saw, essentially. You can just take this and pull it through. Everything on John's saw is stuck. Old saws, that's nothing out of the ordinary. Boy, John, this is tight. 
The last saw, I popped this off in like three seconds. Yeah, that one's tight. Okay. I'm going to try something a little bit different. Try and push it through. Don't want to mess up his jacket, so I'm pushing very carefully on the metal collar only. Yeah, John's is stuck. Wow. Okay, guys. We're going to try going through the other way, going backwards. I normally take it out the front. Problem is, I don't see my regular needle nose. Let's see. I do not see them. That's okay. There we go. Go through that way. I can usually pull it through either way. Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> this thing is in there. Okay, you know what would have helped that whole time? I could have just sprayed it with some uh, PB blaster <laughs> or any kind of lubricant probably would have helped. All right. All right, there we go. I'm going to leave that ground wire on. There's this coil. Very dirty. But it's all run, so the coil should be good. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and take his muffler off. I'm going to see what John's piston looked like. I don't think we pulled his muffler while he was here because we didn't touch this saw, really. We just looked at it, and he helped me recollect with my memory what was wrong with his saw and the story on it. Okay. Very good. You guys, it is good to, to stay organized. Um, I especially recommend anybody that has anybody else's stuff. My daddy raised me. Basically, he always told me, you got to take care of other people's stuff better than you take care of your own. And I said, Daddy, I don't know how that's possible. I'll take pretty good care of my stuff. <laughs> I didn't actually say that, but sometimes I think it. Um, but my, my father did. He said, he, he always said, he always said that. You borrow somebody's stuff. You treat it better than you would treat your own. And if you don't treat your own stuff good, then you shouldn't borrow anybody else's stuff. Because you won't treat their stuff good either, likely. Okay. Yeah, muffler bolts breaking loose easy too. Get an extension there. And then on this O28, the majority of the mufflers will have two... Two screws at the bottom, and some of them, they will be very, very Looks pretty good. You're going to see the rest of it in a minute, John. I, I don't think I can get you a good view, buddy. But I'll tell you what, neighbor, we're going to pull your head very shortly here. I'm going to get your wrap handle off. Okay, the wrap handle, you guys, is going to be 4T25, or, ah, golly, I'm not doing construction. I'm not putting shelves up in my, in my shed. Oh, John's got gas in his saw. That's another thing, neighbors, just so you know, I, I, I am going to make a, a rule in the future, and John wasn't told this. John has no idea. Um, I am going to request people to drink fruit, to, welcome to nerve damage, to drain fluids from their saws. Uh, because it, it is a lot easier, and especially when I get saws that are really old and have been sitting years with gas in them. Like right now, I've got that 028 that's been sitting for 20 years. I didn't know it had gas in it. And uh, this is my used two stroke. And when I went to work on it, fortunately I was working outside, but I, I opened it up. <laughs> And woo, 20 year old rancid gas. Let me tell you what, that's rough. And I can still, the tank's down there, it's empty. I sprayed it, I sprayed it out with brake parts cleaning pretty good outside um, until I get it into the solvents bath. But uh, yeah. John, I want to know what kind of um, two stroke mix. That's really pretty color. It looks like the ocean. My two-stroke is lighter colored than that. Okay. Get that out of here. There we go. Now this fuel's gone. Uh, I do like to keep 
uh, fuel caps on most of the time during the dirty breakdown process because even on the stuff I'm going to put in a bath and stuff, I, I like to try and keep as much debris out of the tank as possible. It makes it easier to clean in the end. I, I don't know how many times I've uh, sat here with Q-tips to clean a tank out um, because I didn't I didn't properly keep it clean. Okay, so I have to be super tight. All right, now back to the wrap handle, guys. As I was saying, on the O28 Supers, the majority of them are going to be for T27s. Um, some of them, why did I just do that? Goodness sakes, I'm... Okay, there we go, that's better. I can't pull the pieces apart because of my arthritis. Um, some of them are flatheads. That 1980 I just did, it was two hex heads and then two flat heads on the bottom. Very weird, very weird saw. But it's beautiful. I think John saw that one while he was here. Whoops. I, I could just imagine John right now. I probably should have done this live. That's what I should have done. I'm sorry, I should have went live, John. I should have just grown a pair and went live. <clears throat> I didn't even think about it, honestly. Would have been cool. Looks already says wrap handle on it. How convenient was that? Small bags aren't always the easiest to work with, but it, it sometimes is easy on a saw that I don't have a common hardware that I can just throw in one bucket. Um, I can just pour whatever I'm going to use, like mineral spirits or you can use Purple Clean as long as you clean your stuff off so it doesn't get any kind of rust or corrosion. Um, and then I can just literally seal the bag, drop it in the ultrasonic parts washer for like three minutes and then dump those out on a little screen I have. Um, and then they're clean. And so when I go to put the saw back together, I'm not getting little bits of dirt, on, at least on my stuff anyways, because I completely refurbish it. All right, you guys, two 8 mil bolts. Where's my 8 mil wrench? Two 8 mil bolts for the carburetor. His is probably going to be a wall barrel. Um, that 1980 was a Tiltson carb. And I was I was surprised I didn't have a kit for it. So we're going to order, order a bunch of those kits. Anytime I don't have a carb kit, I usually order like 10 of them. Even if it's one I've not hardly used at all. That way, if I run into that carb kit again on a neighbor saw or on a saw I'm using um, or building, I have the carb kit. I don't have to wait for it. It's raining outside. I think it's really cool. I really do like the local community <laughs> is here on YouTube and I'm working on their saws and they get to see it. Uh, I don't know anybody else that's doing that on YouTube, you guys. That I'd say that's pretty unique. All right, we've already unhooked this throttle lever. Now on these, the, the impulse hose here can, can be a little bit uh, stiff sometimes and so can your fuel line and anytime you're working on your fuel line if you're going to remove your fuel line on any chainsaw that has a tank vent uh definitely that has a tank vent you want to be careful uh you will get if you if you don't depressurize your tank like open your tank vent loosen your cap whatever and it's full of fuel and you take your fuel line off you can get fuel in your eyes so just be careful all right now and i know john's i can already tell is going to be stiff so i'm just going to Get a little oil down here, a little press oil. Okay. And I'm guessing his impulse hose uh, should be replaced. I don't think they were terribly expensive when I ordered them last for this one. The OE. Everything off because John wants his saw fully inspected and John's going to use this saw. And so we want it to be reliable for him. We want his safety features to work. We want everything to work. We'll rebuild his carburetor completely. Uh, his oil pump looks to be aftermarket. Uh, it, it, I've never seen one without the part number here. That's not to say there's always, almost always exceptions on these things I'm finding out. But I don't see it. But that's okay. If it's aftermarket, that's not a problem. I wouldn't think. These oil pumps are hard to find new. You can't get them from steel. I know that much. When I did my 028 Super... I thought I might have to replace the oil pump. I didn't, but um, 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 a lot of filler words. That's unfortunate. I'm doing that. We'll get better. Practice with everything in life makes perfect. You can't quit just because you're not good at something right away. 
I'm not good at YouTube and talking to air, <laughs> essentially. Because <laughs> right now, until this is on YouTube, you guys, I'm talking to air. It's a little weird, but it's okay. All right. So that spring, I've, I've told you guys before in videos, that's what I like to do. I just kind of put my hand over it. And then all you got to do is get behind it with the pin. The most important thing is you want to engage your chain brake, which means push your chain brake handle all the way forward. And that will decompress this spring. When your chain brake is disengaged, this spring is stretched out and there's tension in it. Uh, you, you, could literally, you could literally take your eye out. This, this is a Christmas story. You'll shoot your eye out, kid, with a chainsaw spring. You don't want to have to tell your buddies, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm I, in the hospital. I, sh I shot my eye out with a chainsaw spring, the, the chain brake spring. Okay, now we can take out our chain brake band. And with that, again, I don't know where my regular needle nose went. I have tools disappear sometimes, but not, not as much as I have lately. Uh, I'm just going to grab it, hopefully with these little ones. Nope, I got the big ones. Okay. Anytime you guys use uh, sprays like car parts cleaner and stuff, by the way, I, I will say this much. Um, I'm sorry, Walmart, but I I think Supertex brand of the carb cleaner and the brake parts cleaner are garbage. Literally, the only reason I bought this stuff is because I ran out and there was two, two cans of Walmart brand only uh, brake parts cleaner and two cans of car parts cleaner. And I was out of both. And I had a project I was working on that I absolutely needed it for. And so I went and bought what they had. It was late at night. And that's the only place I could go. I don't recommend anybody buy it. I like gum out for... for uh, Boy, John, your saw is beating me up. John... You saw us kicking my arse. Your bill just went up another $25. Hazardous conditions. I'm I'm huffing uh, fumes in my shop right now. <laughs> Alright, now that that's out of there, the next thing we need to do, there's going to be two retaining clips. They're, they're called uh, sir clips, I believe. And we're going to have to pop them off. And I can't see them because John saw is dirty. Which is not out of the usual. It's actually... Not as dirty as most of the old O28s I work on. Okay, now that I can see, the best way to get these, you guys, is with a smaller screwdriver, at least these little ones, on your cranks. You want to use a bigger one, but these I like to use a small one. And you can get behind them. There's two little spots you can get behind these. And you use your pen as leverage. Keep your finger there. I have cut my fingers open. I have bust knuckle getting these off, but I've gotten pretty good at it. I still have every once in a while one go flinging, um, but that's when I'm in a super hurry usually. And try not to lose these because if you have to order just this online, it, it's ridiculous. Like eight, nine bucks probably after your shipping and stuff. I'm going to pay like $3.88 at steel because it's a dollar something and then $2 freight at this location. If they don't have it in stock. Okay, there's that. All right, now everything should just kind of you just kind of slide everything off together, um, and and you you sometimes you do have to pry these up, but just take your time. Anytime you're working on this kind of stuff, anytime you're tinkering, just take your time. And behind this, this spring is pretty easy when we put all these. O28s back together. I'll be able to show you guys this. Uh, John's looks. Uh, his appears to. His is broken. It needs replaced. I think I have one though. Hopefully, save him. I like to save my neighbors if I can. If I can give them a spring that costs four dollars for a dollar, I will. Sometimes I even just give parts off of my saws. I don't know why, but I just do. As long as I'm not losing money on everything, I'm okay. So normally it would have. What you have here 
it will have this on this side and this side and then it sits in in a in a hole here and it sits the other one will sit in a hole on your chain brake right there right there that little hole but john needs a spring we'll get john a spring i'm going to write it down i know what i basically need i didn't write it down on the other videos because i was trying to keep them short and, and really I, i'm okay if this doesn't get a ton of views i really this this is primarily a personalized video for john because john's fellow tinkerer and i really enjoyed having him in the shed shop I really did, and I'm, I'm really, really honored that he he trusts me and chose me. Listen, if a tinkerer, if a wrench turner brings their stuff to somebody else to work on, they should feel honored. Um, I, I would never let anybody else work on my chainsaw unless I really, 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 really trusted them. And I'm glad I started a YouTube because John might not have brought his stuff to me if I didn't. Okay. O28 Super. Uh, I believe this is a 51 and a half cc saw. I think it is um, a 46. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. 46. I believe it's 46 millimeter bore. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I know the regular is 44. Yeah, it's a 46 millimeter bore. Ow! Your spikes got me, John. Your saw bit me. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these clips in a small bag. We really don't want to lose these. Uh, I'll have to lose them and then tell John, well, they were missing. And, and then he's gonna be like, um, but I saw it on YouTube. You, you put them in a plastic bag. Or <laughs> could be like, I saw it on YouTube. That thing sprung across your shed. And I'd be like, oh, busted. Just kidding. Haha. Ha. I was just trying to be like many uh, mechanics out there and lie to you. That's a large part of why I'm doing this YouTube, you guys. The, it's, it's sad. It is It is a stereotype, but it's true. Uh, mechanics are not always honest, especially two strokes that aren't working at a big um, at a big shop. I was just trying to find a larger bag as well. Keep these parts together. It will make it much easier after I have cleaned them to organize them uh, for the rebuild. Because I, I have already decided I'm, I'm going to throw all his stuff through, at least the metal parts, through ultrasonic bath for him. All right. Here we go, guys. We're going to take the top end off. Are we ready? Are we ready to see what John's inside looks like of his chainsaw, his super? Oh, we're not there yet. Sorry, guys. Psych. You got to keep waiting, John. got to keep waiting, buddy. I'm not ready to show you yet. All right, here we go. Now, this is a little different. Um, I, I do think he has a newer model, Super. These are typically flathead, but it doesn't mean somebody has not replaced them. Um, I have seen it. They're, they're typically flathead. And again, you guys... There are often variances. I mean, it, is it any surprise that it's possible in 1980, a guy on an assembly line at the steel factory um, might have ran out of a certain bolt at his station and another screw is acceptable to use, and he did. Is it is it perfectly considerable possibility that at the steel factory uh, 30 years ago, they didn't have the quality control that they have today? Um, it's possible. Okay. These grommets, you guys can be a little bit difficult, but you want to go with a small screwdriver, uh, as it was, what works for me on the, on the notch there, get under it and be careful. We don't want to scratch John's saw and take paint off of it. I'm just kidding. There's tons of paint missing from it. And then you just kind of work that out. You can get needle nose behind it too. That helps. I'm inspecting it, you guys, to see if we're going to need to replace it because it's a little warped out of shape. But I'll tell you what, I do think it's okay. I do, I do. All right, and then behind that, you're either going to have a flathead 
a T27, or a 530 seconds hex head. John, your saw's got the T27. And that's positive. His, his um, grommet here is AV grommet buffer. Looks to be in good shape. Uh, these things can add up very quick. If I replace all the rubbers on his saw right now, uh, OEM, uh, we'd probably be looking at, uh, I, let's see, that one I think is like $11 last time I bought one, but that was before steel raised their prices again. Uh, this one was like $10. I mean, they, it could be, pro I'm guessing... 30 to 40 or 40 to 50 bucks for rubbers for this thing at this point. Just the AB buffs. Another T27 behind this one. Okay, I got to pick up the pace here. I'm sorry. I'm getting tired and I got a lot to do. Um. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take his spike off. And the reason I take the spike off is because it gets in my way one and two. We're going to put an ultrasonic bath for John. Why not? These saws are going to be here for a couple of weeks waiting on parts. And then for me to have time to get back to them. This one on, on, on the 028 is a lot of the older steels. There's an 8 mil bolt back here that you got to get a hold of. And you can use a wrench uh, is what I use. I have an 8 mil wrench here for that purpose. On the saw. We just used it on his handle. Organized chaos, guys. It's more chaos at this moment, I guess. All right, well, I'll tell you what. I don't see it. And so sometimes we can just grab something else that's in front of us. And I don't think it'll be a problem. But we're going to go easy just to be safe because I don't want to bust knuckle. There we go. go we'll throw that in the bag his spike just bit me again your saw doesn't like me mad at me because I'm making you wait to see your top end okay and then you gotta go we're gonna flip over to the other side and there's gonna be an AV mount up here that we got to remove a screw from and there's gonna be one behind this uh this AV buff here as well I'm essentially just you know working these out you guys that's it there we go Another T27 or flathead or 530 seconds hex head. I guess on the 028 Super. I'm just used to. I've never seen the hex heads on an 028 on an 028, you guys, until today. 1980 vintage steel 028 metal gas tank. Uh, very rare metal gas tank. Very sad that it's going to be leaving the shop, but I'm very happy that it stays with the other saw it was with. And then up here there is a flathead in this one and two T27s down here. You can remove just the flathead to get the rear tank off. And then the AV mount stays on the body. And then these rubbers, you guys, this AV mount, um, a lot of times on saws is bad. Uh, John's is, at least for now, again, I, I usually don't decide until last minute, at least for now, his does not appear to need replaced. All right, now we've got, I forgot to take these off earlier, you guys, and I do it quite frequently. Uh, boy. They're, they're the, the grommets for your carb. I'm having a little trouble getting this one here. Yeah. Okay. All 
All right, I have one other way I can do this sometimes is if I just grab two, like it's my fingers, chopsticks. Once I get it far enough, I have short sausage fingers, unfortunately. I have big palms, but very short fingers. Makes it almost impossible to find gloves to fit. And his is stuck to his... There we go. Alright, I will put these in with the 8mm nut that, nuts that we took off. I have one more on the bench. I must find it real quick. John, look how disorganized I am doing your saw, buddy. This is crazy. And why, why is that? Because I've torn apart four saws already today. And uh, when I go to start another video, I don't feel like completely undoing my uh, workbench and resetting it back up. All right, I have plenty of those. Worst case scenario, if I did lose it, uh, John's not gonna pay for it. It's just a little bolt. I've got tons of them in the hardware bucket over here. So, we'll just for now put it with our carb. And that's why it's good to just put parts away as you as you as you stay organized, you guys, as you do stuff. That way you don't lose things. Especially if you don't have extra stuff laying around like I do that you can use. There we go. That's oops. That goes to the chain brake parts over there. This this spacer. I'm sorry, you might not have seen it come off, but this spacer will end up being back here behind that other arm that's there. Okay? So we'll put that in its bag. I think because sometimes I try to slow down at working, I, I almost work better at a very fast pace. Uh, it's just kind of, you know, my daddy always taught me that you just, you go at it. You just grind. My dad's a worker, man. I don't know what to say. He just is. The man just work, 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 work. Okay, now you have two things to contend with to, uh, to get this off the rest of the way. Now that we've got all of our bolts off, there's two more things we need to think about. We need to get our impulse hose out and we need our intake boot out. These impulse hoses on these 028 Supers are not very easy uh, to go through the other way. They're just not. It's kind of like the MS290s. I prefer to detach this. This one attaches directly to the case, not to the jug, which is the cylinder. And they can be a little bit difficult sometimes to get off, especially when I, I'm discovering that I can't see anymore. So, John, look how much I don't want you to wait another week uh, uh, to, to get parts in, and I'm tearing you all down tonight, buddy. Look, I'm tired. I didn't even brush my hair today. That's why I'm wearing a hat. A lot of times when you see me wear a hat, it's because I need to cut my hair and I don't feel like brushing it. Okay, so. Uh, goodness sakes. His saw is dirty back here. I can't get behind his line. I don't want to rip it in case we can reuse it. Unless he wants... A new one, you might. We'll find out. That's why I want to talk to him one more time after we got a saw torn apart to find out exactly what he wants to replace and what he doesn't. Okay, and then I just on the O28s, it's pretty easy to get the boot through with my fingers, almost always, unless it's really stiff. Okay, that's that. So I had to unhook that impulse hose from down here, you guys. Now. There's a collar here that holds your in intake boot on, and I usually take the in his is very, very loose here. We'll have to get it clean before we can determine if it's reusable or not. All right, and then on these older steel cylinders, you guys, you have to have the thin reach T27. You can't use like uh you can't use one of these, you know, you can't use the attachments to hold the bit. You can't use this type of bit on a, on a screwdriver. It's not going to fit down there. 
you have to have a thin reach. Now, if you have one of the long, like four or six inch T27s that connects to your drill, that could work too. I don't have one. Uh, that's one of those things. I only buy drill bits in a certain brand and I just haven't had a chance to sit down and order it yet. But we do have a T27 long reach. This one is made by a brand I don't like at all, but it came with uh, a ring compressor kit I have. And then we've got uh, another one here. And you just want to make sure you get down in your bolt good. You don't want to strip it out. Cylinder bolts are the worst bolts to have strip out on a, on a saw. They really are. <laughs> because, uh, boy, you strip a cylinder bolt out, you're in trouble. They're hard to get to. And so to try and tap one out, not easy. I've had to do it. Not easy. So it's best to either clean your heads of your bolts out. Just make sure. Oh, yeah. Just make sure you don't strip them. Oh, I apologize. We need to see if his clutch is going to come off. I did this on the other 020 earlier. But that's okay. All we got to do is tighten these bolts back up. We don't need all four. I'll have to ask John what he thinks about me using an impact on, on clutches. Some people think it's a bad idea. We're going to rebuild his clutch for sure. I can already tell the springs need to be replaced. So, But we got some in stock over there. That's good. One thing we won't have to order. All right. I should be, you guys... I recommend if you have catalysts like PB Blaster or WD-40, you really should, as soon as your clutch on your chainsaw, if it's an old chainsaw or really any chainsaw uh, or two-stroke, blower, whatever, uh, trimmer, you really should spray the clutch while you're working on other stuff. It would be a really good habit I need to get into, and I used to do it, so I need to get back into that habit. Now, I, I am not going to remove your oil pump yet, John. Because I don't know that there's any issues with it. We will test it on the saw, however. Uh, because there's a gasket behind that that is just very complex to make. And if I recollect, I asked Steel about them and they didn't have any. I've never looked on eBay, but I... Okay. Hey, neighbors and neighbor John. I, I hope this will be merged with the other two videos. I don't know why. I, I just put the one terabyte in today. I'm not a tech guy. John, I'm so sorry if this is in three phases that are just random and some of my videos have been cutting off. They're not perfect, you guys. I know they're not great. They will get better, I promise you. Right now, I just have to keep grinding at work and, and I'm tired, but there's a lot to be done. It's very busy in the shed shop right now. Uh, I've got inventory to order. Um, I've got parts to order for neighbor saws. I've got five MS or five 025s over there to finish putting together, one MS250 over there to finish putting together, and, and those are $300 bills, but I don't have time. I don't have time. I need those $300 bills, but I don't have time. John's, we were taken apart. You guys, fortunately, have not missed too much. Uh, the 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 phone shut off for some reason. I don't know why, but it shut, uh, shut itself off. It is raining, but it shouldn't have shut itself off. Uh, we had attempted to move John's clutch, sprayed it with the PB Blaster. I was telling you guys, I recommend when you're working on a chainsaw to to um, spray with PB Blaster the clutch as soon as it's it's accessible and while you're working and taking on other stuff. We were about to remove John's top end. I'm using the front-facing camera because, you know, I, I think I lost. I, I did. Uh, John's watching the channel, and I know he is. He's one of the ones I think is watching most of the videos uh, when he has time. There's a lot there. Um, but if you're like me, I watch in two times speed. Watch me in two times speed. I can understand myself. Um, it all makes sense. And then you can slow it down if there's something specific you need to see. Uh, but the thing is, I did on the camera last night. And, and I mean my, my video camera that I bought on Amazon for this purpose. I, I had uh, an hour of footage on the CS62, Cody CS62, that John Deere where I punctured his gas tank. Uh, I finally put it on my bench and took it apart but i had to have the phone for music it was important it was important I, I mean cody's cody's not making it and nobody hardly ever does making a big deal uh, out of me puncturing a gas tank but 
it, it matters to me because that saw you guys is very 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 rare it, it's not a high dollar saw it's just not one that you're going to see on the market hardly ever and i don't know if that's because there's not many out there um or guys just aren't interested in selling them that have them it's john deere so that could be it it's probably a lot of old school guys have them okay so we haven't removed john's top end i think i found a setting that i can use the front facing camera we'll try it that's my left that's my right that's the bug flying above my head because we're in a shed shop and we've tried to relevel the building again and so now the the door that used to stick at the bottom doesn't instead it doesn't stay closed unless you latch it. So I'm going to go do that. Keep the, the moss and stuff out. And we'll just let that guy be. Uh, he's not bothering me that much. I'll swat him if he gets in the way. If he dies, that's his fault. Okay, so, John, we're ready. We're going to pull your top in. I, I texted you. I was almost devastated. Oh, I, yeah, that's what I was saying. Sorry, guys. Uh, I probably won't even have time to edit this. Maybe I will. I don't know. Cody CS62, the, the footage must have looped into another video like I think happened here because I've got 49 minutes on, on John's 028 Super. And then I forget what the second part was, like like 12 minutes or something. Uh, I don't know what happened. It's just in two videos, but there's nothing missing. So hopefully I can learn to, to merge them together. Um, but that footage on Cody saw, I can't find it. I unmounted the SD card properly like I'm supposed to. And then I went and put it in the computer. I mounted it as you're supposed to. I opened the files. And Cody's footage is gone. And, and I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about that at all. Uh, it's really important to me. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. I hope, it, I hope I find it. I hope I can figure it out. The files are just a bunch of numbers. But there's not one that long. I've clicked on the longest ones. I've went through and clicked next, next, next on the VLC player I had to download to view my stuff. I can't find it. And and so I'm sad about that. But it is what it is. But uh, if I lost all of John's footage, I would be really upset too. So I texted him. I said, are you still awake? He hasn't texted me back. I'm guessing the man's sleeping. The dude's working like 60 plus hours a week. Uh, grinding out at a at a job that, that uh, you know... Yeah, it is what it is, guys. That's the world we live in. Some of us just got to work 20 hours a day just to eat. Uh, I, I'm just grateful that I'm, I guess, you know, even though I want a family that I, I only have to worry about one mouth to feed at least. Well, well, two humans. And hey, there's the other eight mil bolt in the beginning of the video that I was looking for. So we'll go on and put that inside a bag with the carburetor. All right. We are ready. His clutch is not going to come off. I do not think we'll do a video. We're going to get all three clutches off of these uh, off of these chainsaws. You guys, these are metal. And so since we're going to be replacing crankshaft seals anyways, I can heat this up with the torch. I have done it. It does work. We'll probably do one that way. Um, and in fact, I think I have... This one had the tree dropped on it. No, this clutch came off. Um already so that's unfortunate i could have shown you with the torch on that one but we'll think about it i don't know what i'm going to do yet some people would probably say i'm crazy for using a torch but you know uh we'll ask the two neighbors hey do you mind if we do a video using a torch to take a clutch off i have done it i don't do it on plastic saws don't do it on steel's plastic chassis saws unless you're real careful you just don't all right so Let's get John's top end off here. Let's keep grinding at it. It's like 10.30 at night. I'm very tired. It's actually like 10.45 now. I'm very tired. I'm probably going to be sleeping with a pile of laundry on my bed again tonight. I haven't been letting the dog sleep in the bed because she's stinky right now. Her butthole's leaking. All right. Now that I got that, found that bolt there. There we go. When the saw is this far down, you can see your bolts um, in the back here when you got your tank off very easily. We already had that one loose. 
and we already had this one loose and it's almost all the way out still all right this is the part can i get a drum roll please do we have to spend forty dollars on meteor piston do we have to spend twenty dollars on caver rings well not twenty dollars uh ten dollars with me uh ten dollars on caver rings I personally feel like we should loosen the last bolt. Should be like the the Jeopardy music at the end there where they have the final question. Da na 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 na. You guys watch Jeopardy when you were kids? John's my age. Okay, here we go. hide it from you John I get to see first John getting intimate with John's chainsaw right now his 028 super wood boss okay okay all right well I'm trying to find some paper towels here John's a tinkerer, so we're going to give him a very close examination of this. And then, also, you guys, it will go through an ultrasonic bath, and and you guys will get an opportunity, I guess, now, to be able to see the before and after, at least not in just one video. You'll have to see the rebuild of John Saul and the other O28s, because they're all going to go through ultrasonic bath. I think they're all good, and uh, that's excellent. John, I think your piston looks fantastic, buddy. We're going to go ahead and flip the camera. Remove you from the mount. And because I know John understands these things, he is a tinkerer. Um, he knows he knows a bit about stuff. Uh, two strokes. He knows a bit about engines. And the camera doesn't properly show these things. Like, you guys... That might look like his piston is gouged right there. So I'm going to show you where I'm pointing or I'm looking. Let's see if we can get proper light. Get the light. Uh, there we go. Now I'm going to point at it and then I'll hide the... Look right here at this mark, you guys. You see that? The camera might show that as a score mark. And we very lightly, you can use your fingernail... But you can also use a pick or a razor blade. I've got gloves on and that's why I've got enough fingernail out there. But if we do that, there you can't feel anything. And so I do believe that is uh, unfortunately the start of what would have been. Because John John's gears melted on this. And so maybe the clutch got, it could have very well been. Because these clutch springs are loose. Are, are loose. That's what I believe it was. But the saw may have overheated at some point in its life. Just a little bit. And... And it, it may have started, but I can tell you right now, I think John will 100% agree that we're going to reuse this piston. We're going to check the ring gap right now. They actually look good. They look like they've been replaced recently. Except I'm looking right here. I do believe we'll probably replace the rings. Uh, they're, they're affordable enough. I just know that I think... I, I think... We need to get the meteor order in ASAP because I think I'm out of super rings. I got pistons. I got pistons and that one's all open. So if we have to take the rings out of it and replace them when we get our meteor, we can do that too. I've done that before. So that's it. Let's look at his bore. I'm going to put you back in the mount. Shaddy camera work, I know. John won't mind. He gets all... I'm going to get his cylinder bolts so they don't dump out all over the floor. Oh, that's the other thing. I should ask him if he wants to have a base gasket delete and report his muffler. I wish he could have cut with that other 028 Super I did that with. And it had a really different, unique muffler that was usually on the 034 Super on it. So, either way, we're either replacing the base gasket or deleting it. And we are going to have to do a lot of work down in his crank to get all that debris out. 
that's fallen down in there. Um, let's see. See a little bit of wearing. Not too bad. Let's check ring gap. With the used rings, I believe, on the Super. Uh, I'm trying to recollect these things I, in the future when I have more time to plan videos instead of we're just shooting a ton of footage right now. Um, I will have this stuff written down ahead of time, like the ring gap. And I believe it's supposed to be like point... It's supposed to be... um. Let's see, 46 mil, 4, 24... I'm just doing math in my head, you guys. Uh, I'm multiplying it by um, roughly 0.4 to 0.5%. I'm just trying to get a rough figure here in my head. I think it's going to be like 0 0.0176, 0 0.0196. Um, I will do the formula and find out for sure. Ah, I gotta stop doing this with gloves. The length of this video is for John, you guys. Uh, this is this is personally for my neighbor and your neighbor, and so I'm okay if people don't want to hang out this long. I really am. This is for John. And what I'm doing is I'm just using my piston to kind of level out the ring because then I get a really a, a, a more accurate measurement. I'm confident my ring's sitting in, and then I'll do that in a few different places. I think John's rings uh, probably should be replaced. Just looking at the gap, it's it's probably like 0 .022, and which isn't terrible. But you know, if we're in here for ten bucks, I, I know. I know a fellow tinker is going to say, "Yeah, man, you need. Why would you even be questioning that right now?" Uh, I'm pretty sure that's probably what John will say. Not like that, but he would say, "Yeah, of course I want to spend the ten dollars." No, his ring gap is going to be better than I thought. So this is a point zero one nine. That's nineteen thou, and that's where it is. Nineteen thou. Let's see. Yeah, let's try twenty thou. I'm sorry. I thought first it wasn't going to fit. Uh, I think it's going to be like 19 and a half. It's going to be 19 and a half thou. So that's 195 thousandths of an inch. And I think that's actually a really good ring gap. But we'll let John decide. He's going to get to see the video. And we got time for parts. And since it's probably going to be meteor ring, ring or cable rings anyways, um, I know OEM rings are going to be like $35 at least, I'm guessing, right now with steel. So, again, we'll let neighbor John know what's going on. And then we'll tell him we're working to get his video uploaded. And then we'll probably have a decision by the time, uh, anyways, by the time the video is posted, most likely anyways. Unless I get it done tonight. We'll see. I'm just putting this back on here so I don't lose it in case we are reusing them. And then um, we'll get his piston off. And his saw will go through an ultrasonic bath. I'll show you real quick if anybody is still here besides John. On on your piston. I got an alarm going off on my phone. On your piston, basically, there's a little notch out. Uh, I can't see the screen at this point. Right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. And we're just going to get a pick or a small screwdriver behind that. Put your thumb over here on your piston. Let's see. I'm afraid to have the video cut off again. So that's why I'm using the front facing. But kind of put your thumb over your wrist pin clip here. And get in that groove. And you're just going to push the ring. And then get under it. And it'll pop out. Pretty simple. Okay. That's it. Now I remove uh, both. Because I have a drift that makes that doesn't... Uh, that doesn't um, go through without having the pin or both clips removed. And plus, I think it just helps me give a better chance to clean it and inspect things and whatnots. 
Wow. Everything. Woo. His wrist pin is in there. Okay, so we're going to let some catalyst set on that too. And that's not unusual. I face that a lot. But I really think John's John's top end looks great. I'm very happy with it. I think he will be too. As a fellow tinkerer. I am just looking for the top of this $100 uh, tool that I have dropped. And so that's why I haven't said stop to the video yet. There it is. This is not a cheap piece of metal. All right. So that's it. John. That's your 028 Super Buddy Breakdown, Teardown. Uh, I don't know how the video is going to come out at this point. Honestly, I don't. I, I really am trying the best I can, you guys. I can only control what I can control. And so we're going to stay encouraged. Even though we lost Cody's footage. Even though this video did not work out perfect. And even though those are the videos that I, I, I care most about. Um, and that's probably why it's happening. Um, but I'm going to continue. I'm not going to quit. We're going to persevere. We're going to keep the personal touch to the shed shop. We're going to let our neighbors see what we're doing to their stuff as much as we can. Uh, and, and we're going to use the, the YouTube outlet to do that. I do want to grow this channel, however, into something more. And I would love to have it monetized uh, at some point. Because that is something I never thought could be a reality with me. And so I would really appreciate you guys helping me out with that. Anybody that's watching this long, long video still. Uh, I'm hoping to merge it together. Um, please like the video. <laughs> please like the video. I'm, I'm just asking nobody, nobody put a thumbs down on this video. I'm trying really hard. Uh, please like the video. But if you don't for any purpose other than it's messy and jumbly and probably terribly edited by the time I'm done with it, um, and very long, if you, if you dislike it for a reason other than that, just go into comments and tell us with kindness, tell me and John what you don't like about the video. And that way I can improve. I can use your feedback and I will improve. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I would really appreciate it if purchase alert on my, I'm sorry, I saw a notification come up. My Discover card had an Amazon purchase and I don't use my Discover on Amazon. We'll check that out. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and then go ahead and hit the bell, click on all for the notifications so that you can follow these stories. Uh, we will have in a couple of weeks, we'll be rebuilding uh, Nathan's 041. We should have all these parts within two weeks. So all these projects will be coming at a very similar time, just like their teardowns have come at a similar time. We're going to be doing, I'm looking at my board because I'm tired and, and I want to make sure I recollect the four or five projects we're going to be doing. We're going to have, uh, let's see. Oh, we got Andy. Andy has a 288 XP Husqvarna here that we've been servicing and getting back to good working order. It was a working saw and then the fuel line split. And so we've, we've, he wants to make sure Big Hoss is ready to go, uh, for, uh, uh another many seasons. And so we're going to, we, we got one part coming in for that and we're going to have some video of that cutting on a channel. And then we're going to have Cody's John Deere CS62. Uh, that's down here in a tub. And, and, uh, I'm just waiting to be ready to sit down and really focus on fixing that gas tank that I punctured. I'm still looking for a gas tank for Cody. If anybody, anybody out there in this boob tube world can get me a Johnson Red CS62, uh, rear handle gas tank, I would really appreciate if you would contact me at smallengineredemption at gmail.com or comment down below if you've got one of those and, and tell me how many limbs I have to cut off and send you with the water cash so I can get the gas tank for this man. Uh, and then he can have his punctured one as a spare. Okay, so that'll be coming up very soon. Uh, we've got the Nightmare MS290-390. Uh, I have all that footage on my phone. That is a, 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 a saw I put on here. Uh, already though, it's, it's a how to, uh, assemble the top rear handle on the MS290, etc. And then we've got, this is John L. Saw, uh, Jonathan L. Uh, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm looking at their names right. Cause I've got so many 028s right now. Yep. This is Jonathan Luna Saw. 
And that'll be coming up probably in a couple of weeks. And then right right alongside that is going to be the 1980 Vintage. That, that one I don't want you guys to miss. The 1980 Vintage 028 Wood Boss uh, for Eric. He, he purchased that saw and the other 028 that I got with it that had the tree dropped on it 20 years ago. And so we'll have both of those coming up. I will probably rebuild both of his side by side and, and hopefully have it organized by then, you guys. I'm really hoping to be caught up. That'll be like a two-part video, uh, maybe three-part video um, to where we'll, we'll stop the video and then we will, we will just right continue another video. That way it's separate for you guys and you don't have to sit down for an entire hour and a half to, to watch this stuff. I know a lot of people don't want to do that and don't have time to do that. Okay, so, and then also, we're going to have um, Nathan's 041, Nathan's daddy's 041, okay? We'll have that. Hopefully, we'll have all the parts for that. We don't need very much for that saw. It's it's mostly uh, tearing it down and servicing it, and and hopefully, we can make sure that Chinese top end, uh, sometimes those are those are bad, the, the alleged Chinese top end. And then, do-do-do-do-do. Uh, We'll be tearing down Dazzy's steel MS-180. That's a, 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 I don't want to say charity, but that that is me giving back to my neighbors uh, as much as I can. Desi has uh, survived liver cancer twice, and um, I don't mean to keep telling the story, but I want you guys to know what's coming up. I, I want you guys to get involved, and I want you guys to care about these stories and, and these people. These are our neighbors. We're all neighbors, all 8 billion of us, you guys. We're all neighbors and we're supposed to love one another. Whether you believe in Jesus or not, we still got to love one another. Life's crap. Let's love one another to make it easier. Um, th these, these neighbors make my life easier, you know. They let me tinker instead of do drugs, you know. This is my drug. This is my drug, working on my neighbor's stuff. Y'all are keeping me clean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for trusting me. A uh, wretched man like me. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to be doing the, the 180 for Desi. He, he bought a bar and chain from me, <laughs> brought his saw over. Uh, here, I'll show you real quick. I haven't showed you guys the 180 yet. Let me just grab it. Heck. This is Desi's 180. It's got a little redneck ingenuity on it. I like redneck ingenuity, especially when it's good stuff. I liked his fix. But unfortunately, it means he needs a, a, unless we kept that, which we were going to, but now we're not. Desi don't know that, but uh, Desi's going to get a new air filter housing and he's going to get a new top cover, not brand new, out of my stash. And it's not going to cost him a thing. Uh, now, he bought this bar and chain and I showed him my brand new ones for this saw. And he said, well, I can't afford brand new. And I said, well, Desi, this isn't the steel dealer. I, I shop for stuff in lots on eBay. And, and I got a price on these to where I can give you this for such and such amount. And then also, we have this one for this amount. And so Desi, Desi had one that he liked. This was the one. This is used with a brand new chain on it. And I, I believe I only charged Desi $40 for this. Um, maybe it was $45, but he, he, he had, he was like a dollar short. So maybe he had, I, I don't remember. I know it was $40 or $45 max uh, for the brand new steel bar and chain. No, I'm sorry, brand new chain, the, the very lightly used this was just a test bar that I used um, a few times. And so I gave it to Desi at a used price. Why not? And that's it. And so basically, he bought a bar and chain from me. And we're going to rebuild the saw. Because we just did a couple things and the saw wouldn't start. And Desi was told this saw started up. It was given to him. But um, Desi, Desi's low income. And that's because he's disabled. Because man's got cancer. And so we're going to help him out. And that's what we should be doing for one another. We're just going to do it. Desi don't mind waiting until we can get to it, but I want to get to it real soon. 170s and 180s, you guys. I've done so many of them, I can do them really quick. Especially because I don't think Desi needs anything other than uh, crankshaft seals. I haven't done any testing on it yet, but we will. So that's it, you guys. I really appreciate you hanging out. Anybody that's still here, I don't know how this is going to end up on YouTube. I'm going to try and merge it all in one long video. And that's for John. It's solely for Jonathan. This is it. This this video was for, for my neighbor's personal... Uh, attention and my 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 one way to give back to him he requested a YouTube video and so I, I'm going to sit down with this one as much as I can and learn as much as I can about editing it properly I've been practicing a little bit you can see Derek's John's red uh, diagnosis two videos that I edited and there's a couple others I've done a little editing on 
Um, so thank you, you guys. And uh, John, I can't wait to get the parts. And, and again, brother, I'm so honored. I'm so very honored. Thank you so much that you trust me to work on your stuff. Me of all people, the wretched former drug addict. You know, how wonderful is that? You guys don't believe in redemption. You don't believe in forgiveness. Uh, right there, this is a live reality, real life example of it. I, I'm just a guy in a shed, you guys. I'm just a nobody. And this man put his saw in my hands after seeing what I was doing on YouTube. He decided to trust me and said, yeah, I know. This man knows what he's doing. And it's solely because he doesn't have time to work on it himself. That's it. That's it. I mean, our, our, our local Husqvarna dealer knows John and says, you're working on John's stuff? And I said, yeah. She said, that, that, that's really weird. John usually works on his own stuff. And I, I said, I know. I said, but he's, he's so busy at work, 60 plus hours a week, uh, that he brought it over to me. And so I'm honored, John. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys in the next one. I'm tired.